Never. No. Special day on Stevenson Ranch Soil today. Live from Austin, Texas, we got the man Evan Britton. I only say that, I don't even give intros, but I feel like it's, it's needed. The guy looks like a fucking brand new man. <laughs> looks like, look at, look at the, I mean, I remember, I want to say it was book release day, which we'll get into. You revealed a new look. Yeah. Or I hadn't seen it at least. Yeah, it was a, it was a fresh look. And I just, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, just looks sharp, looks healthy, looks 10 years younger. That's what a little facial hair removal will do, but. Yeah, man. Um, big, big Steve, uh, big big Steve following has amassed I feel like I know just from my you know just from my DMs and my messages and my you know fans hollering at me they loved our Montana I know uh, man. that was a great fucking little three-part series we did so it was I'm epic dude. excited to have you back here thanks for coming man oh my god dude I'm excited to be back I'm sorry it took a year it has been a year how, isn't it fucked up like, <laughs> it's fucked up how quick time moves as you get, I, I feel like with every day that passes, you get older and, you know, you get busier and there's, you know, yeah. more things on your plate. It just fucking flies. It doesn't feel like a year ago. No, feels like yesterday, but I feel like we, we have a connection where we could be gone for 10 years and come it's back brotherhood, and, you know? and start right where we left off, yeah. you know? That was a, that was an interesting time in your and you're, you know, because I feel like you're like, that's, I just finished your book today as you arrived, which, mm. which felt fitting, but I love that you're in a trend, you know, I think if you're living the right way as human beings, you're constantly in a, in a state of transform, you know, transforming yeah. and not even reinventing. Yes, but it's just, it's just a steady evolution towards mm. your core back to source type thing. And, um, it feels like since I mean, you were already that guy. That's why I reached out to you in the first place, how we ever sat down in the first place, because I was such a fan of your perspective on hot boxing. But um, it feels as though there's a lot of transformation still happening for you. You're right kind of in the thick of it. Do you, would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would say, I mean, when we linked up the first time, I was coming out of hot boxing. Yep. There's a lot going on. Yeah. I was starting on this new journey. Um, was that 21? It was 21, right? I was like yes, I was about February of 21. Yes. Yep. So I had started the ebb and flow, but hot boxing had come to an end and it sort of made itself official that I wasn't coming back on the mm -hmm. show. And you reached out and you're like, dude, this is fucking bullshit. Come out. <laughs> Where the fuck's my guy, Evan? This is trash. Come out to Montana, brother. Let's right hand to God, I haven't watched it since. <laughs> I think a lot of people haven't. It's interesting. I mean, so, yeah, and I was going through a lot then, going through a lot now. Mm -hmm. uh, just released my first book, The Ebb and Flow. Um, Steve's Book Club. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. You know, it, I'm not sure I'm I'm ready to talk about this, but I feel like with you, it's yeah. Since we're brothers, but um, yeah, I mean, we can we can talk, and then if you want to bag it, we can bag it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Before it goes public, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, have just go wherever you want to go with it, and then. Yeah, I mean. My, you know, my wife and I are, have decided to separate and we're, we've, we, it's been revealed to us that the best thing for everyone involved is for us to get a divorce. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've spoken about it in a public setting like this. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's been really hard. You know, what I'm really grateful for is that there's a lot of love mm -hmm. there, a lot of love and, uh, you know, we're moving through it as gracefully as we can. Um, and, um, you know, during that time a year ago, we were going through a lot and we've really been working hard to, mm -hmm. to keep our family together and to work through it together. And, you know, man, I put my wife through so much shit. 
honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, not only in my football career, trips to the hospital and all that, but, you know, I made a lot of mistakes and Mm -hmm. God bless her for hanging with me and being with me as much as she has. And she's such a massive support of me. Like even now, she's just a huge, one of my biggest supporters in the world. And I I have nothing but love for her. And Mm. so, um, yes, you know, the evolution continues and, and the process continues and it never really ends, man. You know, if you're doing, like you said, if you're doing it the right way and you're living life I don't know if it's the way it's meant to be lived, but to me, it's the only way to be lived is just surrendering to the truth of it all, one step at a time, one yeah. moment at a time. As painful and as uncomfortable and difficult as that is, to just listen to your heart as it unfolds. Because we're caught in this, we've, we've found ourselves in this time for whatever reason, and this has been coming up for me a lot, where at some point we gave the keys of the castle to our human experience to the mind. And the mind can only function in this in the realm of known. What it knows, what it's experienced, what it's read, what it's heard, the logical, the rational. And outside of that, the mind is hmm. gets very afraid and that's where the ego comes in the ego is built on this paradigm of keeping us safe in what we know in our role in character. our role our identity our identity of how we present ourselves to the world how we are in our group of friends in our family in our community etc at our job but that doesn't serve us in the grand scheme of our lives, the span of our lifetime. And the only thing that we can really follow is our heart, because our heart is, is tuned into the unknown. It's tuned into the infinite, the eternal, the universe. You know, it, it functions on intuition. It knows beyond the known. Hmm. And it can be really difficult to listen to that. You know, Extremely. it can be, Really, because, you know, your your heart is saying one thing, but your mind is saying, yeah, but dude, this is, we can't make that move. We can't go to that place. We can't take that job. We can't move to that that other state. We can't do X, Y, or Z, but the heart's going, yeah, but that's it. That's where we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and my whole life has been about following my heart even when I'm like on my fucking knees and I don't want to follow my heart, you know? And my heart's just saying, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is the only place. Mm -hmm. This is the only step left to take. And um, it's a beautiful ride, man. Onward onward you march. Yeah. It's, uh, everything you just said is just so, I mean, I feel that way about all your posts and things. Like, you, I don't know if you have, you realize you have that. I mean, I think you do at this point. Kind of step, the, your book talks about it, stepping into who you are truly. Yeah. And, you know, being a healer and being mm. an empath and yeah. being a spiritually, you know, capable of, of leading in, in one way or another, whether it's fucking to 10 people or 10 million. You know, right. it's kind of innately in you, but it's really hard. Uh, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, with this platform, I mean, there's so much talk about the known and kind of the unlock to everything is realizing, is surrendering to the fact that you don't know. Yeah, You know, exactly. and allowing and, and, and being open and receiving to all the things you may not know. And, and you really get into trouble when you become rigid in what you think you know, yeah. you know? And, and uh, being somebody, I mean, I think this is just part of maturing and, you know, going through life and as you amass and, uh, you know, you get these experiences under your belt, you start to realize, like, I don't know shit. <laughs> and neither does anyone else, really, you know? Yeah. And, you know, with that being said, 
I think all great men or all great people, you know, they have those discoveries and you, you can lean on people who have maybe walked those paths before you're, you know, before you've been there, like the great teachers, the Ram Dasses, any of these people that, great men before us who have, yeah. who have kind of walked down these paths and found, and found these discoveries or at least walked the paths that we're, we're thinking about walking and at least give us a little bit of insight into what it entails. Right. But it really all comes back to, and ironically enough, this podcast name is You Never Know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, exactly. It's... I kind of like, <laughs> even before I even made that my thing, I mean, that was 2015 we started like the you never know thing. I've had my first tattoo ever is Y and K. And I wasn't really even spiritual. Right. I wasn't even spiritually. I was like in me, but I, you know, I, I, I kind of grew up pretty rigid. I was just like, I had such a big ego. I, the only thing I knew was my character of being a great athlete and, right. you know, a guy who got, you know, thought it was cool to get girls and that was a, that was a status thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, being the best athlete, status. Yeah. Accruing, grabbing all the achievements. And, you know, I wasn't that guy, like, look at my trophies. But, like, right. to me, yeah. that's what made me feel empowered. Mm -hmm. You know, when I got out of bed, I was like, oh, I can't. I'm, I'm doing great, you know? I'm just yeah. hooking up with cute girls and playing well on the field and my friends around, you know? But... Mm. Um, as time goes on more and more, like I look back at things like this where I'm like, why, why did you never know resonate with me so much? <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even really think that. Like my ego, I kind of thought I knew what life was about at that point. But somewhere in you. Somewhere in me. You knew that. Yeah. You, you knew that you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the book, I actually, I actually... I love, I love, you really used it like a workbook, dude. Yeah. I love that. Well, so that's that's what, what it is. That's kind of what I want to get into. Because, yeah. you know, I know this through my platform because I'm very tapped in with my fans to as, you know, as much as I can be into what they're... You have a beautiful fan base. Yeah, right? they're the best. Beautiful community. It's, very, it's because it's, it's not spread too thin in regards to like... The music isn't everywhere. I'm not everywhere. Mm. There isn't promotion happening. It's mm -hmm. all organic. So if they're drawn to it to become a fan, it's not. It wasn't forced down their throat. Right. You know what I mean? They were called yeah. to it in one way or another. Yes. But my fans have seen me for the most part. A lot of them have seen the transformation into that guy that I was just talking about, mm. slowly becoming this guy, right? Who kind of is vulnerable and, yeah. you know, just kind of speaking from a place of like i don't know shit and like even when i'm talking about i'm really just sharing what's happening and what's helping me yeah. you know get to where i am um and we started a steve's book club literally because people are just like i mean most of my family was like yeah what are you reading what are you doing i love that what are you eating That's what, so how, awesome. how you know i've been you know since i've seen you in montana there's a huge health conscious thing happening inside of me like i'm I'm almost completely off the bottle. Like, I love that. Um, and I wouldn't say I, I'm not a guy who like has a drink every night. I don't. Mm -hmm. I never drink with dinner. But I had a. I have a binge drinking issue where mm. moderation is out the window. If I'm drinking, I'm fucking drinking till failure. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like I'm drinking till. I love the self awareness, dude. You know. Yeah, and I've had people come into my life, shine a light on that more, and just shine a light on myself. And like, I found myself again becoming a little complacent in this. Like, ooh, I've kind of unlocked the code, and I feel happier every mm. day. And I'm, but like, I'm hitting another ceiling where I'm like, what's, mm. why am I not? You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I and I realized I was, you know, we started this kind of crazy lifestyle of moving place to place and every place. Which I totally got a, dig. Got a sweet way. house and oh, let's call some girls over. <laughs> let's, right, let's drink, you know, yeah, like for sure. Every new city, new bars, new guys to meet, fun, you know. And I found myself kind of a little less my my progress spiritually, my progress on self care, mm. slowly siphoning back down to right. like and not elevating. Mm. And, and then, you know, if I really take inventory, like how many times have I binge drank or done drugs or stayed up too late and fucked off for the whole next two days because I'm hungover? Right. How right. much time is wasted? Yeah. You know, how much precious time on earth, precious time in a, in a period of my life where 
I mean, this this is it. Not yeah. to say this is it in regards to um, this is this is the prime and nothing right. will be better, but right. we've worked very hard to get to where we are, mm. and and we're here, you know, to a certain extent. We've arrived in that sense, and and yeah. I'm allowing myself to waste a lot of this time, where I can I really did start to feel that way. Where at one point I never felt that way. Mm. Like I I viewed it as part of the gig. Like, right. And I do draw inspiration from the energy of other people and Definitely. my experiences with women and out at the bars and having fun and meeting new people. That's and you all. can still do that. But it was a crutch. Sure. And this was the year I realized it. Like mm. just recently kind of realizing I'm, you know, realizing slowly but surely like, oh, there's another, as we just, we kind of forementioned, like there's more reinvention to be had. There's Absolutely. more evolution to be had. And what are the steps? And, and the health conscious, literally from when I open my eyes to when I go to bed, kind of reprogramming that is really like what I'm in the thick of. So this is like perfect timing because you're kind of the guy that's really doing that. Mm. Um, and for people, my consumers, my fans, um, we're looking for a simple guideline, not beginners, but like, it's okay if you're a beginner. Like, right. let's get started because beginning is really like, that's really what it's about. Yeah. You know, if you really can begin and stick with it for just a short period of time, you start to feel it. You start yeah. to experience what we're talking about where you're kind of coming back to source yeah. and you're starting to feel powerful and yeah. you start to prove to yourself like, oh no, I, I don't have to be that person. Yeah. I have the power. I can, That's right. this is my canvas, you know? Yes. And I think this book, you know, I read it in the last 48 hours, which you can read it in a fucking day. Yeah, Easy. You can I, read I just it took it really, you know, I've lived with it and in flow, but really fucking good. Um, Thank and you, man. Really good for, for I, I think this is a fucking great book for most of my fans who are feeling called to something, inspired by seeing the change in me, wondering mm. how or why. Like, this more or less circles the entire thing, mm. the entire experience and then also the entire process. Mm -hmm. Now, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, but this kind of feels like, from a guy who's gone very deep yourself, you know, it seems as though you were kind of had that in mind, like, let's give, let's give people a normal baseline here of like, how can you really implement something that doesn't necessarily feel too daunting? Yeah. Because that's, yeah. that's a big part of it. For somebody who's had For like sure. lower back issues and- totally getting my body moving again and, and trying to, it's a fucking drag. You wake up, a thousand you, know, you, percent. you wake up in the morning, like, ah, I feel crick, I don't want to fucking get down and do this shit. And, and for real, <laughs> totally. you know? I was there. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. I we talked there. about this in Montana. I was there. Um, and yeah, you've been, a, you've been a catalyst for me in that sense. And, I and, uh, that. this, this book, I feel like does a really good job. So, so when you sat down to write this, I know when we talked in Montana, you were writing. Was it was it this, or were you just writing in general, or what? This was coming together. Yeah. Um, in your mind, or was it on paper yet, or, it or was, in your heart? A lot of it was written down. Um, but that's that is the essence of what I wanted to provide because there's so much information out there. So much. So many diets. So many fitness programs there's so many fucking experts everyone claims that their way is the only way and that's super daunting that doesn't it help really anyone yes for someone who is super driven who hears the one thing and says yeah that's my plan that's my guru that's my person i'm gonna follow that all the way in get the six pack abs, get the whatever, get the life I wanna have. Great, but for 90% of people out there mm -hmm. who you're tired of being tired, you're tired of not feeling good, at the end of the day, man, is there anything more important than just waking up every day and feeling fucking good? There's nothing more important. There's nothing more important. And I don't think there's anything more desirable than that. Mm -mm. And I've done it all, man. I've worked with elite level strength coaches. I've worked with world-class nutritionists. I've worked with fucking 
meditation gurus and yoga masters and you know my mother's a fucking mm -hmm. yogi fucking master goddess like she's incredible and i came up in that and i was blessed to have that but what i wanted to provide with this book is everything that i've learned over the course of my 34 years of life you know 15 plus years in elite level competition in the NFL, mm -hmm. working with some of the highest class people on the planet in their fields. I wanted to provide something that anyone could pick up and feel as though they could right away start practicing, implementing these exercises, these ways of being, and change their life right now. Mm -hmm. And it's simple, man. Mm -hmm. And I even say in there multiple times, I'm like, this is the anti-diet diet. I like that. This is the anti-system system. Because at the end of the day, dude, the only thing that matters is about what fucking works for you. Mm -hmm. I saw this great sign the other day. I was with Noah, my right-hand guy here. And we were out at his family's place in Buda. Mm -hmm. Beautiful little town. And there was this great sign that said, if all you can do is crawl, start crawling. And that's it. That's it, man. Mm. You know? It's like, start doing what you can do. And it's one step at a time. You know, I've been walking around here. I've been going and getting workouts at this incredible gym in Austin called Collective. Mm -hmm. I know those guys. Brilliant guys. Kenny. Do you know Kenny? Kenny's there. Jeremy Hills mm -hmm. is the kind of the head guy. Yep. He's fucking beautiful people, man. It's got elite level equipment in there but what's so impressive to me about it is it's like you could walk in off the street and they will greet you as if you're a superstar no matter who you are what you are mm -hmm. and i'm walking in there man and i'm like looking at myself in the mirror I'm like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> <laughs> like who the fuck is this guy I take my shirt off. I got fucking six pack. I got like my yeah. Fuck you look fucking insane I'm fucking right now. good, man. Yeah. Like veins. This like blood mm -hmm. flow is going. I'm like, and I'm looking at this guy, and everybody's like, Eb, you're you're beautiful. Like you're incredible shape. Mm -hmm. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in my life. Yeah. And then I pull up my phone because I'm like, I want to show you guys where I came from. And I pull this picture up of me in Chicago, and I'm like, three twenty five. Active NFL player. Active NFL player. I'm fucking big as fuck. Granted, strong as hell, explosive as hell, uh, an elite level athlete. Yeah. I'm 325 pounds. Yeah. You know, I've got a fucking big barrel chest gut. Like, I didn't even recognize you because yeah. I didn't. I didn't. You know, I don't even watch a ton of sports. So uh -huh. I didn't. And yeah, I, you know, I'm sure I'd seen you play, but I didn't. You yeah, know. yeah, you would. See. But I saw a picture. Yeah. Once we did our episode, and I think one of our our you know someone who worked on our staff yeah. used used uh, a picture from you in Chicago. I was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck's that guy? And that was, and you look a lot a lot different from when I saw you. Even yeah. even just. I mean, you were way more healthy yeah. than, looking than you were in Chicago. But this is yeah. just like the fucking. Yeah. This is like the blossoming of that guy. Yeah. As far exactly. as how your body's operating and looking and feeling now. I'm just so clean, man. And it didn't happen overnight. Mm. And I remember as a kid, you know, seeing the people who were shredded or whatever it was. And I'm not saying that's what that's not what this is about. You know, for yeah. me, this is just I guess this is my genetics. Mm -hmm. And this is literally day in, day out work of making my life, my life is my practice. My life is my art. And I'm disciplined as fuck. And I'm consistent as fuck. And it's not always perfect. And I wake up many days feeling fucking depressed. The, mm -hmm. the you know, dialogue. the mind spirals are happening. The anxieties about X, Y, or Z. Eb, you're not successful enough. Eb, you're not making enough money. Eb, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And I got to lock in right away. I got to lock in on my affirmations. I got to lock in on my breath work. I do my quick little yoga stretching routine. I hit my meditation. And when I come out of that, I'm like, okay, here we go. The day's here. We're here. 
But I was looking at myself in the mirror, man. I'm like, man, this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. And there was a time when I would wake up every day and be like, fuck this. Mm -hmm. I'm in so much pain. I don't want to do anything but just fucking drink beer, eat cheeseburgers and mm -hmm. ice cream and fucking sit on the couch mm -hmm. and do nothing. You know? Powerful. And for me, it was like, what can I do? Because you know that sensation. Someone's on the screen going, you got to get up and go and fucking get the hour long hit workout in or whatever the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, I don't have that. If I'm there, depressed, tired, feeling unworthy, feeling unlovable, eating like shit, out of shape, how the fuck are you going to get out and do a fucking hour-long, elite-level workout? Not sustainable, even if you can pull it off for you a short amount of time. Exactly. Exactly. You can't. What can you do? You could drink a glass of water, go take a fucking walk around your neighborhood, get in the sunlight. Take some fucking deep breaths. Breathe fresh air. You could do that. You do that every day, day in, day out. Um, I've been seeing you talk about the book, Atomic Habits which I feel like is another rendition yeah. of this. Yeah. And I was talking to Dago about it, and then, I was, and then somebody else on this trip this week was like, oh, you gotta check out Atomic Habits. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how the dude talks about how you wanna start a running routine. Well, one day, maybe just waking up and putting your fucking shoes on and stepping outside the door is all you got. Mm -hmm. Do that. Mm -hmm. And you just do that one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Day in, day out. You take another step. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, here we are. The 1% incremental steps yes. that you can take. Um, I resonate with that so much. And I think every single person does. It's just so goddamn hard to be consistently any of the things we're talking about. Yeah. And I think, it's, I think it's really why there's, it seems as though as much as you can look and take a very quick look at the world and its state, you'd be like, this is a fucking mess, you know? And there's validity <laughs> to that, right? Of course. But there's like an, there's an awakening happening and I, I stand by it just like- No doubt about it. Just, you know, just a, a general awakening happening about this kind of stuff. And it, it's coming from a place of authenticity where yeah. you know somebody like yourself who's influencing and writing a book about all these things it doesn't it doesn't impact nearly as much if you don't also have that statement you say you know what this wasn't overnight i have i have those i wake up to this day with those feelings i have these vulnerabilities i feel these this is how i offset those yeah. because every single person has them you exactly. know exactly and it's just so so important now i thought it was ironic that I think you started your first, maybe not your first, but I think one of the first quotes, uh, maybe chapter one, was the Lao Tzu. Yeah. Um, which I'm a huge Taoist philosophy yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, changed my life. Yeah. And I think I was thinking about you when that quote came to me. As yeah. Like, if you don't read the rest of this book, this mm. is all you need to know right here. Yeah. You and know? I smiled when I read it, but that's kind of what I think you're doing really well with this and why I think you know, every book that I, every book that I recommend, cause I've been, we're recommending more and more, but this is like, speaks to me. And I think it speaks to a lot of this younger generation. And I'm your age, I'm like a year younger than you, or maybe a year mm -hmm. and a half, but I, you just feel like a lot, not, I don't even mean it. You just have like yeah. a wisdom to, you You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but this speaks to this younger generation, and I just feel like a fucking infant half the time in my mind, but um, <laughs> speaks to this younger generation of just like, it's about balance. Yeah. Like, it's not about, like, that's what the Tao, the way. Yeah. Like, it's, it's no extremes. It's, yeah. yin, it's yin, like a, a perfect yin and yang, yeah. and it really is important to, to cover the bases and be balanced in it. If mm. you're just... Like Matthew McConaughey has a great speech about this where he talks about, you know, the checklist of things. Like if you put all your time into being a great athlete or you put all your time into being a great author, 
and you're, you're negligent to a lot of other aspects of your being, you'll never be able to enjoy the fruits of all that labor. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it has to be balanced like anything in life. It has to be balanced. And I think this is such a balanced, simple, well, broken down approach to achieving a balance. Yeah. And an, an attainable balance out of the gate, which I think is really, I mean, basic tools to transform your life, the ebb and flow. And I think it's I think it's exactly that. Yeah, bro. Um, Thank so you. So everyone, check it out. I mean, we can talk through the book more and more, but I mean, one thing you know, it's interesting. Talking about setbacks in particular, I left the NFL at like three twenty-eight, and at that time, I started this. I really started in on a ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. I started working out with this strength coach in Chicago who was next level, he was awesome. He put me on a keto keto diet. That worked really well for me for like five years. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I I used keto with intermittent fasting, but the thing about keto for me was I'd be super strict for five days and then I'd fall off the cliff and I'd binge for a weekend. And then I get back on, you know, and I drink the beer and fucking eat like two things of ice cream, eat a whole mm. pizza, all the stuff. Yep. And slowly but surely, you know, I just get, okay, Monday morning, pick myself back up. We know what to do. Intermittent fasting is a great tool to kind of clear the channel, to just get your body back going. Get back on it. Go long stretches. Really dedicated, really disciplined. I fall off the cliff again. A couple years out of the NFL, I dropped down to 290, 280 in that range. A couple years later, dropped down into like the 260, floated around 260, maybe even bounced back up to 275 a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then st came back down. Now I'm about 247. I feel like I don't really have... I don't need, I'm not trying to lose any more weight. That was really just natural. I wasn't ever really trying to lose weight either. Um, but the cravings, what was really interesting to me and what has been maybe the most interesting thing about this process, as I have become more whole inside, because at the end of the day, man, that's what it is. Mm. We're trying to fill the hole inside of us with food, with sex, with alcohol, 100%. with drugs, whatever it is. You know, 100%. we're just trying to fill that hole because we're trying to get to God. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe in God or not. Yeah. You're trying to get to that God feeling, that God sense. Right. And these cravings would just, they would come still. You know, ooh, I really, I just want a beer. I can't really, ha I can't, ooh, that, you know, glass of wine sounds really nice. The pizza sounds really nice. But now, here I am, what am I? Uh, 2014 was my last year in the NFL. I've been on this journey really solid, you know, since 2015-ish. It's 2022, so call it six and a half, seven years. Man, the cravings are gone. I'm not drinking anymore. When we hung out in Montana, I would still drink here yeah, and there. Yeah, we got, we got drunk We got drunk night. as fuck. Beer pong. The, the first night. That Kicked was like a drunk. Beer pong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course. Can't come does. to Stevenson Ranch and not take a couple <laughs> losses and some beer pong. <laughs> got no my matter ass what state I got my ass kicked. But honestly, dude, like, I'm at this place now. There's just no cravings at all. And it's, and my cheat days now are like, Oh, the sweet potato. Oh, like, you know? Yeah. But it's not because I'm, it's just. I get what you're saying. 100%. I've been polarized in this place of, it's just not even appealing to me. And there's nothing wrong, like you were saying. You know, partier, partying is beautiful, man. Enjoying this life. Mm -hmm. Enjoying people. Mm -hmm. Enjoying all the beautiful things that this life has to offer. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. You know, and the feeling of being hung over and having to kind of like, you know, recover in that ah. way. <laughs> you know? There's nothing really wrong with it until there's something wrong with it. Facts. 
You know, where you find yourself that day, you're like, what am I doing? Totally. And for me, that's where I've gotten to is like, I don't have a day to waste. I don't have a morning to wake up where I'm not the fucking best version of myself mm -hmm. that I can possibly be. Mm -hmm. And that feeling you said of like, you're on the path, you're evolving, you're growing, you're open, you're, you're surrendered to the experience, but you find yourself, you get to these ceilings, right? And then you change something. And in the plant medicine world, you could go and do an ayahuasca ceremony, or you can go and do this, you could do a fast, you could start a workout plan. There's all sorts of things to kind of yeah. blast through that ceiling yep. to get yourself to the next plane. But at some point, you get to the place where, where I'm at now, and the feeling I have when I wake up every day is, it's just infinity in front of me. Mm. Because you're on your your life is a growing process regardless and you're just not doing anything to stand in your way of that growth and that evolution so it's just constantly unfolding and evolving in front of you it's well said cuz i i'm i'm going through it right now yeah I, I'm going, i can see that dude. yeah i'm going through it and i'm enjoying it i'm actually proud of how i'm maneuvering through mm. it and i think it's a it's actually i'm proud because i know that in previous times when i've hit a ceiling i'll get discouraged mm -hmm. or yeah. even even downward spiral you know deprogress you know the other way and um i feel like i'm because of my experiences i'm open and willing to listen and to just like what's the word just kind of watch it mm, like yeah. watch myself what's why do i feel this way i was starting to get anxiety from partying mm. which i never did interesting i'll wake up and be like and then i'm talking to myself i'm like who gives a fuck bro you're a fuck i, I don't have anywhere to be i don't have a family i don't have i don't have i fucking made a song last night it's probably gonna be fuck it's residual income like i'm working but I, you know something in my being was just like dude stop you know like stop doing it and yes i know and that something in my so well. physiology as well yeah. you know just like you know and and then there's the peter pan in me like we live very young lifestyle mm. we're very yeah i joke about it like i feel so fucking young because i'm just like <laughs> we're technically still living in like like we're in college we just yeah. got money yeah. You know, like the houses got bigger, <laughs> but it's the same idea. Yeah, totally. And, you know, I realized that I'm holding on to the adolescent dream of like, you know, even when I played baseball, like it wasn't really about the game. Mm. I knew it was my meal ticket out of normal, you know, I always knew I couldn't be in Rhode Island and live how my fam. nothing against people who just, you know, mm. I just knew I had a knowing in me that I, I wasn't going to be that. Mm. And baseball, I was always, you know, you know, kind of an outlier and, and knew I had a, and knew it, I had it in me to at least get me out of my hometown and go. I went and played at Duke and, and I had yeah. the injury, you know, but I didn't really understand I didn't really, the awareness and the understanding of what was happening, you know, now I feel like as this is happening, my awareness and my understanding of what's happening is far greater. And I'm able to look at it and, and evaluate now what's happening in my life. And it's like, dude, I'm actually hanging on to what I thought was cool when I was younger. And why, I put, getting back to that, why I played baseball, it was my meal ticket out, but, you know, money and fame and, 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 uh, you know, as a kid, the teenage dream, like, yeah, mm. I want to be that. Like, I looked up to the pro baseball players that made millions of being able to take care of your family. And, and I still have that in me. Like, but, you know, now I'm able to look at it and be like, man, you know, I have, I've evolved past those goals. That isn't what it's about for me, mm. truly. You know, I've evolved past that. And the, the, you know, musician, superstar guy who gets all the girls and parties and lives with his, and is free as a bird. I love that so much, right? Mm. But 
a lot of it I've outgrown and a lot a lot of it it's just not it's not even aligned with me anymore in a sense you know and when we were in Montana remember I told you because I knew you were on the spiritual path yeah I was like it'll be interesting to see because it's hard to be on the spiritual path and be the party guy yeah it really is it, it literally like it's I literally felt like like what's that you know literally getting pulled both ways at mm. the same time yeah stretch armstrong and it, and it, it, i felt it in my being like my heart like yeah. i was just like yeah you know and then i have this like i'm the guy like every athlete like baker mayfield lives right there every right. city we're at like yeah we get we get up we tee it yeah, up totally. you know what i mean we don't get to see each other much they're totally. out of season Yep. When I see him, we're going fucking burning it down, you know? <laughs> of course. And of course. every <laughs> part of my brand is that everyone, everyone, all my fans, you know, I would love to, I would love to come have a fucking beer with you. Let's get fucked up, of course. you know? So I've had this like kind of inside holding on instead of letting go, which mm. you talk about how important that is. And I couldn't agree more. I'm holding on to like, this is who you got to be, man. You got to mm. play this character like. This is who this is who you are, you know. Don't you're you got you're right in the middle of it. Like we're the most popular we've ever been as a musician, and I never would have thought I'd get here and feel this way. I, I would have right. thought we'd be going woo, <laughs> fucking fill up the party bus, you know. I love that, man. Yeah, and we've I been doing that. it, and it it almost feels like a victory lap I just took. Mm. Like we went and partied the USA, party in the USA, fucking yeah. Miley Cyrus, you know. Yeah. Like we did it. Yeah. And it feels like a victory lap and I feel like I I really am approaching closure mm. with it. With that being said, there's challenges. We have 40 fucking dates coming up. Yeah. You know, I have friends all over the place that will come and and I will drink and I'll have a good time on stage, but like comparing it to what what I used to do, I mean, I would poison the fuck out of myself every night. Mm. And I never, if I take inventory of it, I never really like alcohol. I never liked alcohol. I never, if I'm not drinking to then go out and party, and I call it binge drinking, if I don't drink at all. Mm. So who am I doing it for? Right. Right. To be that guy? Right. You know, or because, you know, yeah. like, isn't really about just understanding what you desire and what you want. Not to say it's all about you and do what you want all the time. I'm just saying, like, the alignment with my actual soul's purpose well, or soul's... Well, yeah, that's an interesting thing. Yeah. Because your mind is telling you that one thing. Yeah. And your heart is telling you another thing. Yeah. So the do whatever you want all the time, from the heart perspective, yes. From the mind perspective, that's, a, that's the one Smart. that needs yeah. to be checked, you know? Facts. Because the mind is the one that'll... It'll tell you, hey, bro, it's cool. Take it, take it easy. And then the moment you take it easy and you quit or whatever it is, you stop. And your mind's like, dude, you're a fucking bitch. You're a pussy. Why'd you do that? You quit, man. You're a fucking quitter. Mm -hmm. And it'll shame you. Mm -hmm. But your highest self, that voice that truly it emanates from your heart, which is all love, it'll never say that to you. Yeah, non-judgmental. Yeah. And you know, man, you can do whatever you want to do. You do whatever you want to do. This is your creation. You know, and you've, you're a complete, you're a king, you know, literally, man. When Alan and I left Montana last time. Mm. Great trip. It's such a great trip. This is one of my favorite trips. Of, Felt I've like we ever, all needed it. Equally. Yeah, it was so awesome. We were leaving going, Mike's a king. It's King Mike. We were just Thank spent you, time with King Mike, you know, and... It's interesting to watch you and your evolution. It's mm. beautiful, dude. It's so beautiful. Thank you, sir. To see you be aware of this and to watch yourself come into this, you know? And, um, you know, the two things I'll say to you is when you go on tour, which I'm stoked about, I'm going to be there. You got to come. I'm going to be there. Um, you can do it however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't know anybody anything, and I think your fans would even love to see whatever Absolutely. it is you, you evolve into. Yeah, it'll also be difficult at first because you'll be like, "Wait, I'm not going to drink tonight. What do I do? How do I do that?" You know. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting. 
You can do it however you want to do it. The other question I have for you is, because you said something about, is this what I'm doing it for? Like the chicks, the fame, the status, the, mm -hmm. the external stuff. So when it's not about that anymore, what is it about? Yeah. What are you doing it for? Yeah, I mean, I mean, dude, you're, you, one of the reasons I, I love you so much is because your, your heart just comes through your music. Yeah. Like you are, you have tuned into your, your expression of God, your, your artistry as a human being comes through your music and you're so devoted to that. Totally feel And that's so beautiful. Thank you, sir. And can it be just about you making the best music you could possibly make without any external thing? Because then it's like the sky is the limit. Right. You know? Right. The you, the fucking galaxy, the sun, like it's, so it's limitless. Yeah. You know? That's that's what I have a feeling of in my heart. And I, I knew that. So I had the spiritual shift happen through some pain and some heartbreak. And my first real pick yourself up off the fucking floor moment mm. as an adult. Mm. Because I didn't ever get to... I didn't ever really get to sit with the emotions. I buried all my emotions when my injury happened. Mm. I mean, I went from... Yeah. Never being injured. Yeah. To a year ending injury. Just never being able all of a sudden I just never could play again the yeah. same way. Yeah. And I had to persevere that. I mean, I was like the golden child in the family kind of Right. You you can you can yeah. connect with this. Like the yeah. whole family revolved around making sure yeah. I'm healthy and I'm able and yeah. and I'm getting to practice and I'm getting into the games and we're all going to sit and watch him play and mm -hmm. clap and fucking, you know, what do you want to eat tonight? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and then I, I, for the first time, felt as though I was letting my family down when I got injured mm. because I was about to be kind of, you know, at that point I thought a couple million dollars was it, you know, but we know <laughs> that. That's not it. <laughs> um, but, you know... I was a year away from getting that. I was going to be a pretty fairly high draft pick. And, mm. and just, it was like the first real life lesson. Like, oh no, you don't fucking, like, at, in an instant, yeah. you, it's all gone, yeah. you know? Um, and, and I never really got to live with that pain because I buried it. My, my family was very upset, you know, they, not just for me, they were sad, you right. know, like, seeing me like come back and like struggle and like I was like half the pitcher yeah. I was. Yeah. They're driving down 10 hours to watch me pitch and I'm like, yeah. you know, I had a freshman year, I was all American. Literally nothing went wrong. Right, right. Every single bounce went my way. Yeah. It was like a last hurrah from the universe. Uh -huh. Like, here you go. <laughs> yeah. And this will help you on your next journey. Like yeah. you're all American season. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And it did because uh -huh. I don't think, I don't know if I would have got my, I don't know if I would have got off the ground if I didn't have like, this guy was an all-American baseball player. It's kind of good. It's kind of right, cool, right. you know? Yeah. Um, it's all connected, you know? Yeah. But I've felt I had a spiritual kind of, I, I got drawn into the spirituality and I started to open my eyes to life. Like I would never, I didn't see the allure in life. I was kind of in my own little, very on this fucking plane of just mm. like, what do I got to do? What do I want to attain? What are my goals? Here we right. go. What do, what do I want to do right now? What do I want to eat right now? What girl do I want to see? What, yeah. You know? Yeah. And I saw the shift happen almost immediately with my music, my creativity. Mm. I went and got, learned Transcendental Meditation mm. in 2015. Everyone, all these guys are like, <laughs> all right, dude. I love Kilmer's videos. Like, let's see what the meditation guru is doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Walking in here. Now, like, everyone's warmed up, spent yeah. some time, yeah, you know, of but like, of course. I was just called to these things, and I know, I know I experienced what it did to my being and my human experience. It's yeah. like when anyone, when someone experiences God, you could say it to somebody who doesn't believe in God, and they'll say whatever, but you, you yeah. fucking felt it. Yeah. So no one can tell you otherwise. Yeah. And I went through that experience, mm. um, and I just went on to start sharing it with my, with my platform. Love that. And, and you know what? 
I didn't really think twice about it now that uh -huh. I think about it. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, what the fuck kind of drugs did Mike take? Like, <laughs> isn't this the guy that like, you know what I mean? Damn, California really got He's to Mike. He's a fucking chug bud guy. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like, is he chug bud in ayahuasca or what? Um, but, you know, I, love that. I didn't think twice about it. And I just, the truth. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. And you asked me, this is a long-winded answer, but like, what is it about? It's about the truth. Mm, yeah. You know, if I'm going to be an oh, artist, boy. this whole time it's been about the truth. Yeah. We just released a documentary. That's one of the excerpts. It's like, mm. people liked me back then when I was the rah rah college guy because that's who I was. Right. It was fucking authentic. Yeah. Now, if you didn't resonate with it, it is lower frequency. If you didn't resonate with it, you're like, fuck this douchebag, whatever. Mm. Okay. Right. <laughs> but if you were, at the very least, you'd say, I mean, this is fucking organically who he is. It's the truth. Yeah. And there's a quote, I'm going to butcher it, but it's like, there's no such, like, my version of perfection is just the absolute truth, whatever it may that. be. Yeah. You know, like. That's it. There is no facade of perfection when you're authentically, totally true. Yeah. That's actually per perfection. That's the mm. only version of perfection there is, you know? No doubt. So in regards to what I'm trying to do with it or what it's, what it's about now, it's just giving my truth. Every song is the truth. Every conversation, I've never thought about one conversation I'm going to have on, on camera, you know? And, yeah. I, and another quote of a, a good friend of mine, uh, his father told me, um, he, he got up and gave a wedding speech at their wedding and he said something that resonated with me. Ironically, I was high <laughs> on course. drugs from the night before <laughs> in <Of> Cabo. <laughs> don't, take the, don't go to the local pharmacy and look for some ecstasy. <laughs> it's probably not ecstasy. Um, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, he says this and it felt like a fucking beam from the universe yeah. came down. He's just like, and he's not a spiritual guy. He's, he's you know. Yeah. But been through a lot. And he's like, you don't need to rehearse the truth. Nope. And I think that's that. kind of how I walk this path. And I don't give a fuck. What, it's given me so much freedom creatively to draw my life out yeah. the way I want to. Because if it's true to me, then what else? You know, that, that's, the only, that's the only map I can follow. You that's know? it, man. That's it. What the yeah. fuck are we going to do? Go around... Being someone else? It's empty. Doing someone else's truth? Can't do that. Yeah, it's empty. Yeah. Absolutely, man. It's there's, empty. There's nothing else. And, I, and I, I, I realized that I had an experience with the emptiness of that. Mm. Because I'm living in L.A. I'm, was this his last trip to this L.A.? Is tw no, this is 26. Oh, this, is when I'm, this is when I get really start walking down the path I'm on now. Uh-huh. I'm walking. I, I remember sitting down in my studio, had a crazy party the night before, fucking bunch of celebrities there. This yeah. is what it was all about. It was big, Woo! brother. You, you, cool. hit the, you were you at know? the top of the mountain. I'm in fucking, you know, in West... Hollywood uh, Hills. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in a fucking, you know, dream house. Yeah. It's four times the size of the house I grew up in. Mm. I'm with my buddies. I'm, you know, this, you know, I'm, I'm more successful now, tangibly speaking, but at this point, I was the most successful I'd ever been. Right. If you had told me I had a platinum song, I'd be like, you're crazy. I had it. I had a Victoria's Secret model girlfriend. Or mm. you know, at that point, we were on, on a, it was on its wit's end, you know? Uh -huh. um, and that was a big catalyst. And I'm forever indebted to her and that experience. Interesting. I, as yeah, you spoke about your wife yeah. and what you're going through, I resonate with it. But I also, I resonate with it on a level where I couldn't, I had that realization of like, I put her through so much. Yeah. And then you just, you grow that compassion. I wish I had it in the moment as you do now with mm. her. I didn't have it until I was removed mm. and kind of did self-discovery and, and, and was able to reflect on myself and kind of step outside of my ego about it, you know? Mm. But I have all these things that I thought I would really make me feel happy and fulfilled and I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And that was the kind of aha, first yeah. aha realization that Man, I gotta, I gotta get down to the core. What the hell makes me tick? Yeah. Because, because this, this isn't trending the right direction, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, well, it's amazing how this path and and 
the success and when you're really in your artistry. Yeah. You're, you're, I mean, dude, you're fucking, you're major, bro. You're just starting, too. Like, I, you, I know you've been on the ride for a while, but you're, I mean, you're just about yeah. to boom. Yeah. You know, it's been like building and you're huge already. I know. Cause they're like literally now, everywhere I go, I'm at, I'm teaching yoga in LA and your songs come on in the studio. Sick. I'm like, yo, that's my dog right there. You know, Love it. <laughs> like, that's my guy, Mike, dude. Yes, sir. You know, and, um, but it's interesting because now, you have a constant, you, you must be tuned into yourself because otherwise you'll quickly, as you're feeling, become a slave to it. And it'll, it'll fucking, this is a fucking unchained tiger now, Doc. And mm -hmm. this thing will just take you wherever the fuck it wants to go. Mm -hmm. And you've created it. Yeah. But it's a living entity now. Yeah. It's a living, breathing thing. Mike... The musician, the artist who creates music, that's a whole fucking entity in itself. Right. So now you have this thing where you have to, and Ram Das and all the spiritual, the spiritual teachers talk about this, and Bhagavan Das, in one of my favorite books, It's Here Now Are You, he said, the path of the guru is one of the most dangerous paths to be on, because that's so intoxicating, because everyone's telling you how great you are. Mm. Everyone wants something from you. Yeah. I mean, you look around, your life is fucking, mm. this is it, bro. Mm -hmm. People drink, little kids are dreaming about being Mike one day. Yeah. You know? And if you just let that go, you let that continue to happen without staying centered and locked in on your heart and what yeah. you are and who you are and what you want, your practice now is constantly coming back in constantly checking back in what a fact you know because it'll fucking run you ragged without it i'd be fucked yeah and 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 there was an inner turmoil dialogue tussle about this like dude you just you don't need this to get here like you don't need this shit like just fucking keep going you know like and i have these like my mind would be like you don't need to fucking meditate every day you don't Right. You're, do, you're tapped in. You, you know, you don't need to yeah. fucking... And my body has been a hard teacher. Mm, yeah. Because, like, someone said this the other day to me, like, if you're a billionaire and you have daily migraines, mm. you'll pay a billion... If you got a billion dollars and you get daily migraines, you'll pay a billion dollars up front with the promise of never having a migraine again. Absolutely. And I'm, you know, I have all this, you know, the fruits of my labor are, are revealing themselves in my life. And, you know, the manifestation is, has, has happened in, in many ways. Mm. And, I, and I find myself feeling the way I, I do and getting out of bed and I'm cricket. I'm like, this ain't, this ain't fucking right, you know? Mm. And, I mean, these guys joke. I'm like constantly going to, I'm hyperbaric. I, mean, I was in the hyperbaric Love all morning, every, every morning. And I, you know, and then I'm, I'm in my room for fucking three hours going through yoga, you know, and all these <laughs> things. Awesome. And sometimes I'm like, the ki the young, the, the fucking inner dialogue is like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? You got money, you're, you know, you're free, do whatever the fuck you uh, want. You're in your room on your fucking hands and knees doing fucking cat like, cow pose. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, and I'm like, how is that? I'm, is this how it's supposed to be? Like, what? How did I get here? Mm. You know, and. The Atomic Habits book has been a fucking refreshing, mm. recentering thing because it's like the mundane, boring aspect. It's like, no, you have to fucking do this. Yes. And it's, and it's honoring yourself. Yep. It's honoring life's gifts. Yeah. And you have to get out of that inner dialogue. And, yeah. And you have to get into your heart. And yeah. you have to do it every fucking day. And, and the shit you were saying about, you know, I don't, I don't see myself any different. I don't... I don't I know something happened a little while ago where like, I was like, oh, I can do this. You know, mm -hmm. I can go to this next level. I can do it. And, you know, but without checking in on myself daily, you know, the fucking wheels could fall off and I yeah. feel it. And it's a scary feeling and it's, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah. struggle. You That's know? it, man. 
It's so beautiful when you get into that. It's a beautiful struggle and it's it's a beautiful it's a very freeing realization when you when you realize that the, this is part of life. Yes. You know, why are we why do we feel why is our mind telling us that anytime we got bad feelings or bad thoughts or bad days that that's a punishment or mm. we're failing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the water comes in, the water goes out. That's it. The fucking the yes, tide it does. the ebbs and flows. Yes, you it know, does. the ebb and flow of fucking life where it's like you know, this is essential to your growth. This yeah. is essential. Like who you are. When you said, Oh, I look in the mirror, I'm like, who the fuck's that guy? Yeah. You know, it's you're not that guy without the fucking pain. Yeah. That drives you to fucking work on yourself and become a beautiful person and become beautiful inside and out and somebody yeah. you're proud of when you look in the mirror, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, the one last thing I want to say is, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But about that, that thing of when you find yourself doing what you felt would make you happy the rest of your life, inevitably that thing you'll find like, oh, that thing isn't making me happy. You know, I had this experience, I do this corporate, I do corporate wellness coaching now in LA and I go into this company in Venice once a week and I take the whole team through breath work and yoga and then I sit with their whole sales team one-on-one, -on -one, help them process whatever they're dealing with. And that's dope. Yeah, it's amazing, dude. It's really like, that's my heart passion, working with people. And I found myself leaving there one day, leaving the office one day, and, you know, life was happening. Like, I'm in the midst of all kinds of shit going on. And it was this reminder of, hmm, I'm doing exactly what I feel my destiny calling is, work with people, help people be the greatest version of themselves. And yet, if I thought that was going to be the thing to make me feel happy and whole, still not going to do it. I still need to be happy and whole inside, within myself, on my own, regardless of anything I'm doing, anything I have, any, even any person I'm around. We can't expect any external thing in our life to fill us and make us whole. We have to do that on the inside. And if we don't do it on the inside, it's not gonna happen on the outside, you know? Um, and another thing about mission, you know, publishing this book, I've been meeting with a lot of people and they're saying, Eb, what are your goals? It's interesting. I haven't really thought about that. What are my goals? And it occurred to me, like, right away, I was like, what are my goals? Beyond living a life full of love and joy that is anchored in my heart, my only goal in life at this stage is to help people be the greatest version of themselves possible. That's it, man. Mm -hmm. Life of service, anchored in love and joy. Outside of that, I'll walk the streets, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Honestly. I mean, this is like, that's it. That's all there is mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one other thing, just like talking about all the things we've talked about. I think the worst thing, I think where people, where you run into where depression wins and where, where the anxiety wins and people really fall off the ledge it's when you, you know, you stop, you become numb. You stop connecting to God or source or universe and you, you become so immersed in the trials and tribulations of your human experience that you don't feel anymore. It's like, yeah. you don't feel at the mm. magnitude. Like, I, I, I say it like this. It's like, feeling alive is the goal. Yes. Yes. And if it's fucking painful, you're feeling it though. Yes. You're experiencing it. Be there with it. Yeah. You know? 
because what we all know what comes from it, the pain. If you can fucking really experience it and live with it and not run from it or bury it. Yes. Great things, growth, opportunity, um, progression. The most magnificent things. Solutions, Yeah. you know? Allowing solutions instead of forcing solutions, mm. you know? It's a big thing. Yeah. And, yeah, and next time you're going through it or if you're going through it right now, tap into that. At least I can feel. Yeah. You know, at least I can feel this. Mm. At least I feel alive. This shit makes me feel alive. This shit with my wife. We're in this together. Like, we're feeling, at least we feel fucking alive. At least we have the capacity. I, you know, I just, I think that's, that's, a, that's a decent light to shine on this. It's just, yeah. it's okay, you know? It's okay. It's okay. And, and if you can, in real time, put yourself there in that headspace, mm. I personally think you, you, you navigate those times a lot swifter they're over faster yep you know and and you're able to view and witness the solutions that the universe will offer you versus being so entrapped by it yeah you know and so in your own pity and yeah and, and doing whatever me. you can to get out of it or yeah escape it or not feel it or, right you know i love that dude yeah that's it and the breath work all the things that you're talking about in this this is uh a roadmap back to that. Yep. Um, and really, seriously, anyone who's, all the people who are messaging me, hey, like, what books are you reading? Or, hey, can you tell me, like, what your daily routine is? What are you eating? Like, you know, I've been sharing a lot about just becoming healthier. I went and got my health evaluated, saw mm. all my levels. I'm on a pretty serious regimen. I'm on paleo mm -hmm. diet. And this, uh, this book is like literally something you can start as like your kind of daily Bible to just walking towards a better you, you know, yeah. um, which obviously we can end on this because it's what you just said your goal was. Mm. And as much as, you know, you may have grandiose visions of what it may look like or feel like when you're, as you said, you're actually tuned into what your heart is telling you as your purpose. That's the grandiose. That's it. You know? Doesn't get any more grand than that. And when the result, you're detached from the results, it's when you get the results. Yeah. You know, so it's, I told you this in Montana, but you have a special knack for it. And, and uh, just leading people, no matter what the size may be, is, is your calling. You just fucking keep walking that path. But you've been helping, super, all the guys in this house fucking love your stuff and will be, you know, this is just the beginning. You'll be on here oh, many yeah. times, but. I love you, man. Keep doing your fucking thing. And Thank you. How's Austin treated you? It's been amazing, dude. Been here for a week. It's just been nonstop podcast, book promo, meeting people, workouts. It's awesome, man. I really love Austin. I feel at home here. It's a great city, great people, great energy. It is. A lot of opportunities. I mean, I, I feel like I'm going to be spending a lot of time here over the next year. I, mean, I think I, you're a fucking, I think you're a great fit here, honestly. I mean, I know you have moving yeah. parts with family and, yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll, it'll all come together perfectly. Sure will. You know? <laughs> Dude, I appreciate you so much, man. Appreciate you. I'm I proud of you. you. you I'm proud fucking, of you. Thank you. You're a published author, sir. Yes, sir. All Thank right. you. Cheers. Cheers. Love you, brother. Love Great you. Stuff. Thank you.